I think obesity has um, nationwide contributed to um, the increased prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, we tend to see a lot of patients uh, for snoring and sleep apnea issues. Not everyone that we see who snores has sleep apnea, but people with sleep apnea tend to be extremely loud snorers. Uh, the big concern about sleep apnea is that you are actually stopping breathing at night, which increases your likelihood of having high blood pressure, heart and uh, lung disease, and even increasing your risk for sudden death. So it's important to uh, come and see a specialist. Uh, sometimes we have to proceed with a sleep study to document how severe um, your sleep apnea is and what's the best uh, treatment that could help with your uh, symptoms. Um, I would always stress, you know, good um, regular um, exercise plan. Uh, weight loss is important, and even to the point that if you need to modify the diet, having you see a uh, dietary consultant just to kind of help with uh, uh, making sure that you're eating properly to give you the best chance to lose weight. There are a lot of people that lose weight, and overall their health dramatically improves. As an ENT specialist, we see a lot of patients with uh, chronic uh, nasal symptoms, uh, chronic uh, sinus disease, uh, even recurring acute infection, nasal polyps. Um, all these uh, tend to be initially treated by primary care doctors, but if the symptoms persist, or chronic congestion, chronic runny, drippy nose, loss of smell, chronic headaches, uh, a lot of that, those symptoms could be related to recurring acute infections or chronic sinusitis. Uh, we typically evaluate you in the office for these uh, symptoms. Often we do what's called a nasal endoscopy to better assess the nasal cavity. Uh, it's a small telescope after we numb up the nose to take a good look at the passageway of your nose to look for any nasal polyps or signs of any obstruction of the little natural ostia or the sinus drainage pathways, uh, which can make you more prone to having persistent symptoms and reoccurring infections. Um, there are many people that, despite medical treatment, they continue to have more difficult time treating acute infections or persistent symptoms despite acute treatment. And those patients often need to get a CAT scan of their sinuses and um, possibly need a sinus surgery to improve uh, their quality of life and uh, dramatically reduce some of their sinus symptoms. Um, we do at Astrobula. Uh, County Medical Center now have uh, a uh, navigational sinus equipment. Uh, this is a equipment that nationwide is used for patients who require uh, chronic uh, or require sinus uh, surgery for chronic sinus disease, nasal polyps, but also um, those patients that have had previous sinus surgery but now have developed recurring symptoms, even revision surgery, to give us a uh, more uh, safer means of proceeding with uh, surgery. Um, the equipment is a 3D, allows us to see, three, see the anatomy and 3D orientation, which uh, minimizes the risk of injury to some major structures. Uh, the sinus cavity sits between um, your, your eyes and uh, sits below the brain. Those bones that separate the sinus from the eye and the sinus from the brain are probably the thinnest bones in the body. And therefore, it's important when you have previous surgery, nasal polyps, which kind of distort the anatomy, or chronic inflamed tissue, to use this equipment to improve the ability to effectively remove the disease tissues, but also to minimize the risk of complications from uh, sinus surgery, some of them which could be mild, but some of them could be quite uh, severe. In general, the risk of sinus surgery, compli major complications are very, very small, but this uh, new technology gives us um, kind of an added uh, safety cushion to improve uh, the patient outcome with uh, more extensive and more clinically um, um, sufficient um, surgical removal of the disease, but also minimizing the risk to the patients themselves for developing any short or long-term complications.